<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome back. We are into the next 1v1, and it's going to be, uh, oh. uh, to say the least, John, an interesting one. Uh, Victoria versing <laughs> Moogie, and as you can all see on the screen, it's going to be Techies versing Shadow Demon. Why oh my? Oh, oh yeah, I, I do like uh, Victoria's uh, Techies. Like that—that's a good look at the very least. You know, it's going to look good. It's not. It, it's going to be. Hmm. I mean, think about this. Level one Shadow Poison. You stack it up in Techies. He's not particularly fast. And what does Techies do? He could, he could suicide, I, I guess, if you time it. That's just, it's not, it's not exactly easy to get anything done in this lane. Yeah. So, like, uh, <laughs> for oh. What do you do? Like, it's, it's going to be a weird one, though, because you, you've got, you know, you do have the blast off that, uh, that does do a lot of damage. And if you, if you are the Shadow Demon, you can't get caught off guard. Like, Mugi can't really let his HP drop too much. Otherwise, Victoria could just blow him up pretty quick. And what do you do with these mines? Like, do you actually bother going for the mines at all? Y you have to, right? Like, it's just too much damage not to, not to go for. Yeah. At the very least, you can, you can shove out the wave with your mines. So you have that going for you on this uh, 1v1 mid. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> There, there is some potential there to shove out the wave of the mines, I suppose, and maybe do damage to the towers as well. You can, you can get that done. I just think Shadow Demon up against one v one should be able to sustain it. Like level one maybe is the best shot Techies has before you can see the disruption come out. So if you manage to jump onto Mugi before he has five stacks on your, well, probably like three stacks considering the damage you do to yourself, you can maybe. Clean them up with a blast off, but it, it doesn't feel like it's going to be enough, though. So, well, okay. we'll find out how exactly Victoria does run this. It's not going to be too long as the uh, laning stage is about to start. The blocks are out. Definitely giving the one of the most interesting heroes in a 1v1 matchup. You've really <laughs> got no right click damage as the tech is. Huge amounts of range, but a terrible animation. Terrible right-click damage. So the last hits from Victoria are going to be almost impossible. I just... If you're Victoria, surely you've just got to... Alright, he'll place a mine down. He actually goes for that over the blast off. That is the only way to secure CS. If you are Victoria in this matchup. Moogie gonna tr can always kind of kill them off and get a bit of extra gold out of it. You know what, Victoria, he's playing this pretty well. He's pushing the creep wave underneath that T1 tower, and that's going to make it a lot harder for Mugi to actually secure his own CS. Yeah, it's been a struggle for Mugi. I mean, Shadow Demon isn't particularly easy to last hit with, but Techies at least has a mind to play around with, so Mugi is not finding the last hits he needs, and just really good mind usage here from Victoria. Yeah, he brought out three mangoes automatically, and now... Smart decision, gets the magic wand, understands Moogie's going to be spamming the Shadow Poison like no tomorrow. Get as much value out of the stick as you can. I wonder, like, this tech is, like, he's probably just going to legitimately keep buying mangoes. Like, if you were in this 1v1, that's all you would do, oh. right? In fact, he may have put himself in an awkward position. Victoria has to be careful right now, Moogie. Does get the disruption, this could be first blood. As he has three stacks, one more would do it for Moogie, I believe, and it does. He finds the first blood, Victoria calls the GG. <laughs> nice, huh. quick 1v1. Close call, a bit early for the blast off. Yeah, there's really not much else you can do in that matchup. Uh, good try, like, he could have taken it slow and chipped away, but I, I don't reckon he wanted to get that done anyway. Oh. Well, that was fun. That was, uh... Probably the fastest 1v1 we've had so far. That should mean we get into the next game faster. So, it is an LP Donald Drone X Fire. We'll be back with you once the first game draft has begun. Feeds off this kind of hero in the, uh, in the safe lane. See? Yeah, honestly, I'd, I'd avoid that lane altogether. I think you'd want to swap it out. Maybe have the Dazzle lane against the Underlord. That does sound like it would have some potency. I just don't think you want any safe laner there. No matter what combination you have, Underlord just tends to eke out a better existence. I think when you factor in either Grimstork or Shadow Shaman laning partner, 
that can be really hard to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. And seeing that on the Lord, Newby are going to take their time with this fourth pick. Might have, uh, it may have put a bit of a spanner in the works for them. And that position one they were thinking about, maybe it's not so uh, such a good idea anymore for Newby. They're going to use a lot of time. Only eight seconds reserve time left for this fourth pickup now. Radiant team and... Tide okay, Hunter. Tidehunter comes out. Hmm. These bo Both these teams are choosing heroes we don't get to see every day, which is really nice to watch. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the Tidehunter. I, I guess there's not really much to control it, right? Because Kraken Shell just essentially purges off most of Sables anyway. So this Shaman, with all the control it does has... Have may not be quite as effective up against this Tide Hunter. Yeah, it does lock Newbie into some really heavy cooldowns. You already had a Warlock you had to worry about. Now you have a Ravage from the Tide that you have to really time yourself around. So they are limiting the game time where they can force these fights out. That's something CDC is not really relying on beyond the, sh uh, sh the wards from the Shadow Shaman, which is really just mainly used for the push, although they would need that burst damage for the Tide. But Ah, uh, you know, it, it, it just kind of slows the pace for new B. And it does look like maybe the Dazzle will be on safe in the Tide in the off. So you will have the Underlord up against the Dazzle. I think that's an easier time for that hero if they are going to go that route. It's not the most uh, awe-inspiring kind of lane and awe-inspiring kind of safe laner. Uh, they're really going to have to try to kick it into gear pretty quick and try to find that early XP for the Dazzle so you can really start to kick it up a notch once you have that 50% CDR. Before then, like the earlier levels of bad juju just kind of feel lackluster. Yeah. UB, final pick. They go for the Lena. So, pause one Dazzle? Pause one? Yeah. Okay. Probably. Okay, okay. Uh, right. That's the only way I see that. Like, it, the Lena at least allows them to come in line fairly quick. Really... Pretty, pretty darn okay up against the Ember. You are still lacking that ultra-hard lockdown, so you're going to be depending on like a Ravager or a Golem drop for the most part in a big team fight. But the Lena can follow up nicely. It eats right through the Underlord. Doesn't care about the subtraction on physical damage. Of course, Lena can right-click pretty nice, but Underlord can be eaten through fine until the pipe comes out. That is another issue for Newbie. I have to say, with this kind of lineup from Newbie... I just don't like the reliance in cooldowns here. It's a bit too much on the Warlock and Tide. And that leaves a lot for C-Deck to play around. Like the moment that they see Newbie pop the Golem, pop the Ravage, C-Deck can either just take their time, take their time farming or force fights after that. You know, even if they get wiped, they can just go back in. There's so much downtime for Newbie and there's not much turnaround for them. C-Deck now, looking to finish off their own draft. Unless it's going to be a mid-ember, which it definitely could be. But up against the Lena, you probably want to just run the safe lane ember. Run something else mid that, uh, that doesn't get so heavily affected by this Lena. The question is, what will it be? Okay, the TA pops out. Still have ways of going through the refraction charges. Like, Lena doesn't have that much of a difficult time just kind of hitting her way through them, but I like it. I, I think c has this really nice lineup that could kind of snowball out of control, and you've been talking about the uh, the newbie draft having such long cooldowns that they have to rotate around. c don't have that. All their heroes can just go at any time. Yeah. Yeah, that's a major issue for Newbie. They're going to really have to maximize that Golem and the Ravage every single time. They have to ensure that they can take these towers with the Chaotic Offering at the very least. And if they don't, like they take a team fight, they win, but they don't melt towers. You're giving time and space to C deck to get bigger. You're not taking the space you need to maximize these long cooldown spells. And that just, it really takes a lot of momentum away from Newbie. So I, I like this closer from C deck. Um, I think the TA will allow them to eat through that squishy lineup Newbie has. Beyond the Tide, all these heroes aren't particularly tanky. Like, yeah, you have the Shallow Grave on Dazzle, 
it, we've seen it happen already. It hasn't been the highest impact. It just really is a bit of a delay. And a lot of times the Dazzles are forced to shallow grave themselves because they are cores. So that leaves everyone else free for the pickings here. And C deck with, with that Ember, with the TA, should be able to close that gap and melt through whatever heroes they want. Yeah, pretty interesting matchup. Of course, this is the debut of Newbie in the uh, CPL, DPL, C DPL, CDA League is what I was trying to say. <laughs> It'll be their debut. First game, first series. They'd love to start on a high note. They've definitely brought a very unique draft out. So we'll see Moogie yeah, on that Dazzle. YG on the, uh, gonna be on that Tide Hunter. Moving up to the top lane together. Wizard on the Pango. And of course, AQ gonna be on the mid laner. Yeah, it, uh, so, that's a support tide? Yeah, pos four tide, pos three pango. Hmm, I, I mean, haven't seen that. Tide can farm the jungle, so you can play greedy like this. It's uh, You really will be shafting fate, though, with this kind of lineup. Like, There is no way fate will be able to find anything left over by YZ. So he's just not going to get that progression on the Warlock. I think you're going to be expecting a pretty late chaotic offering. In fact, the book might also just go to YZ. As a pos four, of course, so there are tanks here for newbie that can cause a bit of concern. The laning presence can be quite fantastic though. Like the potential for gush and the slows that could come out from Moogie. And of course the DOT on the warlock can be devastating in the right hands. So if they can land all of those spells and chase people down, it's gonna be a hard lane to run up against. Already they kinda run towards James. James will not bother. YG just double checking to see if he can find another, but SRF is there to secure. That will still mean newbie do start off with a three bounty rune advantage. So a nice little net worth lead to start off for this side. And uh we will have a bit of a trial lane going on. Yeah, poison touch. The TOT from Faith and the Gush. All gonna be quite nice. Definitely some first blood potential as you mentioned. SR no, never mind. They get Faith out of there. He'll go down to the bot lane as the Warlock. And YG, what are you up to, sir? He's going to pick something up off his choreo to be a nice salve. And so safe lane tied with this uh, Moogie Dazzle. I suppose the Dazzle doesn't need too much help uh, in this laning phase. He, he has a way of sustaining himself and shoving out the wave. Uh, I do worry about... Perhaps by level 3, when James has a lot more control and some nukes, that's going to really cause a damper there. Although, Faith already finds the first blood over onto the Ember. Arme losing his life. And, uh, looks like Arme may have just overextended, found themselves in, a, in an awkward tree line, and Wizard was there with a the swashbuckle. And so, Newbie, already uh, a great start for them for this game. I'm just trying to figure out what Wizard's up to. He's going to go for a pool for now, and... I've never seen that kind of pool before. <laughs> Doesn't work. So, try something new. Doesn't really work out. James now going to get gushed, but Ether Shot going to be there. Now Moogie going to rotate, and he does have Poison Touch. Nice body box coming out of YZ, but there's going to be a TP out from James, and he'll be perfectly fine. Um... Yeah, I, sorry, I, ju I just kind of disconnected. Oh, you disconnected, okay. I was going to say, he tried the block again. Usually you go out through this tree line. But he, uh, he tried it again through the same one. Or the pool, I was meant to say, not the block. It did not work out again from YG. So we'll have a look at mid lane, where AQ is going to be up against XM on the TA. And although AQ has some huge range, XM should, uh, should have the favor in the matchup. Considering he has that bonus damage from a refraction. And, well, for now at least, AQ can't really get through all these refraction charges. Bolt lane Victoria again going to fall quite low. And they do have Fatal Bonds on top of him. I don't think the Fatal Bonds is going to be enough to really put him down. He'll eat a Tango through it anyway, just in case. 
that was pretty close from Wizard. Doesn't manage to latch, but this combination with Warlock is actually applying a lot more pressure than you'd expect, although they start to make move on Wizard. They'll try. Swashbuck will be up in a second anyway. Faith has that natural heal available for his uh, his core Pangalee, so can just keep him pretty healthy through this matchup. Though, maybe he may have gone too far. Wizard swashbuckles away. Tries to get the slide of Fist. Doesn't really do much up against Wizard. I think he was trying to slide a Fist right as the Ink Spell was going off. Because if hero does get physically relocated there, it doesn't hit the timing. It is a very tight window, though. Can't fault him for trying it, at the very least. It's kind of ridiculous that you can even try to do that. <laughs> Ember Spirit's such a such a flexible hero. It's it's he's a bit too flexible. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, plays you can do with Slade Fist, but for now, I'm gonna leave him back to farming. I think this actually really hurts C-Deck a lot more, just having Victoria walk back. It's a long window where Ami is just gonna have to cop all the harass coming out from Fate and Wizard. Top lane seemingly going pretty well for Mugi on the Dazzle as well. Like, SRF hasn't been able to find too much in the way of denies. In fact, he's got zero right now. Uh, YG has been able to keep them away from his position one Dazzle. Mugi has been having a, a great old time. Yeah. They do try and oh. jump on SRF before that five minute boundary mark comes along. They won't get much out on SRF, but they do take out over half his HP. So you got to be okay with that. YG looks to make the rotation now to get that battery in off the side of C-Deck. But James does have shackles and will commit oh, no. just before he gets the bounty. And now SRF will commit Firestorm and that's going to be a fair bit of damage. James, he may have enough and does with the Aether Shock. They finish him off. Though bot lane, Ame goes down on the Ember. It's not a good time for CDC in this laning phase. Just having the Ember die to the constant harassment from Faith and Wizard is really not where you'd want to see this combination out. Maybe consider a lane swap, but they have Ami go right back to bot. And they're just not keeping up. Wizard is actually a level ahead. It's going to give him a lot more damage to play with here, although all alone. Chains, now that with the silence, the Inkswell will connect. No, it doesn't. The Swashbuckle was there just in time, but it still stunned him. Wizard does go down, so they do finally get a bit of revenge off onto the Pangolier. That's a bit of good news for C-Deck. So uh, that safe lane of theirs was going pretty horridly. Yeah, there's, just, there's just no presence here, and you it is kind of surprising that they are still having this matchup. I think you would rather have that Ember up against maybe Mugi. You can sustain the damage a bit better shove it out a bit more and with a root that you have in the underlord you stop wizard from really just zipping around so there is a lot more if they did go for the swap but they're just gonna let it be i think uh ame is just gonna have to cop it for a bit yeah i mean they're putting a lot of faith into xm who's been farming very well on that ta james comes in for a bit of solo xp in the mid lane but of course does leave as soon as xm is ready XM will continue to just freely farm up. He is just so far ahead of AQ on the Lena. AQ gonna try and uh, catch up a little bit in his own jungle with with a double stack, but the TA can just can just jungle so much quicker if he chose to. And in fact, XM yeah, will have to go back now. And it's the slower pace of game is playing into what newbie wants. Like this is allowing them to slowly reach their level sixes. And it's at this point where the heroes are kind of susceptible to just being shoved out. But CDC is just not able to find that pressure with their own heroes. Like you're not seeing that laning presence from the Shadow Shaman at all. James is just soaking mid as he has been for the past few minutes. They can leave SRF alone, but you know, it's, it's, it's like you're really not kicking newbie down when they're very vulnerable it, it is allowing them to slowly build up here that's really the problem with these uh these shaman picks though isn't it like you just can't do much uh, shackles and hex is great and all that but overall the hero just doesn't have that crazy lane impact it used to 
Uh, well, maybe once you have level six, sure, you can do something with your team. But up, up until that point, you're kind of just... It's almost like a lion, right? Like, he has a stun, he has a hex, but he doesn't do anything in lane. Yeah. It's, it's a tricky hero to really run now. I think the level six is going to be what you're looking at. Although, up top, SRF just getting poked a bit by YC. It's actually really favoring YC into trades. Like, SRF takes very little damage, but he's not hitting back. So, the Tide Hunter just gets to shove him away, drags him down to very low HP, and just gives a lot more space to Moogie than you'd really expect. Well, he's going to get solo XP up the top lane as well on that Titus. Moogie has the uh, the Necro 1 book, so he wants to join his team, try to make a gank and maybe a push on this bot T1 tower super early on. Wizard thinking about going for Rolling Thunder, but it does get cancelled with the chains. Still, he does want to go. Remnant forward from Ame. Faith is there. You don't have a golem drop yet. And Wizard, where are you going, sir? He was waiting for the remnant usage from Ame, but he's still holding on. And now XM comes in. Faith oh. goes down, and it looks like they're going to also lose Moogie. Wizard does eventually find Arme on the Ember, but I'm not sure if it's worth losing two of your own for that. It's a it's a nice kill for newbie. Um, they did lose their pause of one for that, so it's it's a very big price to pay. I don't think it's worthwhile, although they did get it first, and you know at the very least you have a lot more on that dazzle. So you are slowing the pace here for Ame. You do force XM to rotate out, which gives you more space on AQ. You don't manage to leverage that Necro book into a push, though. And this is going to just uh, give a lot more breeding room to towards CDC. Well, they definitely want that level 6 on YG if they're going to try and make those kind of plays, I think. Duh. Well, he's level 5 now. He'll have level 6 very, very soon as he is just farming up solo up at the top lane. I think why fight if you don't have the Ravage, if you don't have the uh, Chaotic Offering? It's just... You know, a couple minutes early. Well, Wizard gonna get caught out by the chains now, the silence and the Ink Swallow. No, he barely gets the swashbuckle off. While the Ink Swallow does land, he's still got to relocate himself. At least Ame does get the uh, the bounty bottled up for himself as well, so he'll be okay with it. Yeah, it's uh, rather unfortunate. They haven't been able to land that Ink Swallow follow up on the Ember too consistently just yet. And this is allowing Newbie to just kind of play around there um they are still somewhat leaving xm alone i think that's that's the big thing that all of these movements from cdc has done is that xm has more than free farm with the jungle farm now he's at level 11 is rushing the blink dagger first so he's really looking to set that pace for cdc while waiting for army to get big and as long as UB doesn't get the five man together and the, P the TA can definitely eat through, but you're seeing those level 6 pops out now. Uh, Faith has Chaotic Offering, and YC does hit level 6, so you're going to have that Ravage up if they do opt to level up, and there you go. Well, they so have a 5 man from UB is scary now. Right now, mid lane, oh, cancelled TP, oh YG, he was, uh, he was in Vision of SRF. His TP gets cancelled by the Pit of Malice. And they do end up losing that T1 mid tower to the Serpent Wards. In fact, XM's the one who picks it up on the TA. That's a big loss for Newbie. Dyer's top tower. Yeah, that's exactly how CDC needs to play around her Shaman. Once you hit 6, they immediately pop that ward, take the tower. In fact, SRF finds that top tower as well. So they've lost two objectives, just like that, Newbie, and they're not able to fight back. This is the moment when they should, though. They've, they've got the goal, and they could try to go for something. Well, they kind of have to. They're, this farm game kind of suits C-Deck a lot more. In fact, it looks like that Warlock, Faith, may get caught out here by Arme. No, Moogie going to be there. The TP immediately away. They have to drop the Golem if they want it. And oh, they do, but it's man. too late. He was out of range. That's a waste. Uh, That's yeah, a big waste. It's a, it's a long... It's a long cooldown. They don't find the kill. They do get the tier 1 tower, but that's without the assistance of the golem. So Fate will just use it to farm up for a bit. Meanwhile, their top lane is getting severely shoved in. And James is just about half a minute off from the wards. So they do send a wizard in response. Uh, I think newbie kind of spreading out like this at this point is not playing to their favor. They need YC around to help them with these fights as well. They need all the spells they have. And... Because of this, C deck is very comfy in invading this jungle area. AQ. 
going to show himself. Peter Malice is going to be there from SRF, but the LSA does land. There's just no way to capitalize out of AQ, losing so much HP to the fortification of the tower. Meanwhile, top, Serpent Wards have been dropped. YG trying to defend the best he can. Serpent Wards will get a, a fair bit of damage off onto that tier 2 tower. XM may not even be done. In fact, Chains come in. He can swallow as well from Arme. He does commit Ravage on YG, but they got the Inkswell off, and now the Soulbind is there on Wizard. But that'll be enough. Rolling Thunder will fly out. Victoria is really the only target he can hope to go for. They will settle with the support kill, and some nice, decent jukes out from Victoria. He does die anyway, but now the bot lane. They found Faith on the Warlock. It's going to be a direct support trade. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's a bigger win for CDEC because they forced a Ravage out in that fight, and they forced out the Rolling Thunder. Now, a Rolling Thunder is not as long of a cooldown, but a Ravage is definitely a long one, and that's something CDEC can play around even if they lost their support. They've got the options to force a bigger fight. They will have to be cautious about the Warlock, although that's still about a minute off, so there's still a bit of a window there. And they get really good damage in that tier 2. They were just waiting around with James. He was up there the entire time for a long time, and... It's down to about 400 HP, so that buff in the last patch really not doing much to mitigate CDEC's push. Smoke. Gonna come out from C-Deck now. Under a ward, though. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Dyer, right I'm underneath scared. the ward. They know exactly where they're headed, so... Faith, not gonna uh, give it... Or maybe he does give his life away. Slide of fist. Golem oh. to be dropped. Oh. And they are gonna rotate. It's a bit of a bait from Faith. Right, YG doesn't have Ravage. It's risky, but James is out of position. Does go down. Arme. Looking to clean up the other POS 5 and does. Meanwhile, the fight continues to break out in the back lines as they do find Victoria. It's going to be a 2 for 1 trade in the favor of New B. But I worry about that top lane because XM is there on the TA. They have to rotate up top. He wants that tier 2 tower and he's not leaving until he gets it. And he will eventually finish it off. Now, YG, he's been left alone. He is pretty tanky. But oh. not enough as Arme also uh, also finds his way in and he really wanted that courier and XM will find it. Cedek are just dancing around New B at the moment. New B again just forced to forced to use their alts in unideal situations like they they throw it out very far away from any objective that uh that chaotic offering so they don't really have it up for this next push. They only manage to find like uh, support for that ultimate and that's really not the kind of trades you want you be they are tied to these ultimates and it's just not being maximized they are trying for a tier two you do have the ne necro books coming up on the dazzle in like three seconds so you can get some decent damage out like, so they I should suppose. be able to get it but SRF is going to be there to defend with the firestorm and one of the real positives about the underlord right you could just commit firestorm and they can't do anything they can try to go for a gank though. James, he's going to find a Hex onto Faith again. Golem isn't going to be available. Firestorm's there. Inkswell as well. And Faith just can't do anything on the Warlock. There's just no mobility. There's no real save for himself or anybody else for that matter. He just has to tank the gank. Yeah, that's, that's really all you can expect from your Warlock. As long as your Warlock's the one that keeps dying, you're fine. Um, I think the discipline for Faith has to be in to holding on to that golem. Like last time when he was attacked, he dropped it, and it did look like his team could maximize it, but not quite. This uh, will allow CDEC to go into the Roche. They drop the wards. There is a Ravage on YC, so if they're aware, they can go for it, but there's no vision from UB to see this one happening. Well, Arme may have made it obvious now, but you can't get past Arme. He's got an Arcane Rune active on the Ember. And YG, he's already lost three quarters of his HP. His armor is not done. He wants to keep going. He doesn't have more than one remnant, so he has to be a little bit careful about how far he dives. But he's bought enough time that XM has the Aegis, has the Blink, and has the Deso. Going for the BKB next with a 3k net worth lead. Cedek is really, really running over the side of Newbie at this point. Yeah, I mean, Ami's just being super disruptive. 
on that ember and new B. It feels like they're trying to play a farm game, but what what core do you have that benefits from farm? A dazzle, so a dazzle into guardian greaves. It can be potent, but you have to hit level 18. So you have to max out that bad juju for that to really start turning fights. And we've seen it time and time and again. The dazzle just doesn't get to that point fast enough. I mean, we see Mugi playing this hero a hell of a lot in, t in Team Newbie, but... It's, uh, I mean, they clearly see something that, you know, most people don't. They really do prioritize this Dazzle pick whenever it's available. Now, so much time has been bought that Ame, even after that terrible start he had to endure, he does, he does have a full Spirit Vessel up. You know, all those heals that come out of the Dazzle now, come out, come out of your Warlock, not really as effective as they used to be. Meanwhile, bot lane, XM finds a T1 bot tower. And this is uh, this is the part where Newbie just holds. They're going to try and defend whatever they can. But yeah, maybe they find Army. Nice fling forward from Wizard. That'll set up Laguna, LSA, all being committed. Army, slide of fist, but the oh. Rolling Thunder connects. Oh, very unfortunate. Really important kill for Newbie. Just finding Ame, finding some way to get your Lina even bigger. Does give them a little bit more breeding space. Still a 3k deficit on them. I'm surprised Newbie hasn't tried to smoke up with two of their ults up. Like, this is really the time to get that te big team fight going, but... They've, they've been taking kind of slow, which does give CDC some opportunities here, even if they lose out in Ame. Their split push is going quite well. They're shoving in the lanes quite nicely. And they're still maintaining that lead. So, Newbie, this is actually their moment to shine when their ults are up, but not quite ready yet. Do you think they could actually fight even with that Warlock Golem and, and Ravage? Like, it, it still feels like it's going to be too hard. They're going to try and it, maybe, maybe buy their T, T2 tower, they could. But Pit of Malice, Firestorm, there's the Golem being dropped. They do end up finding Victoria. That's a nice way to start. Now they chase onto XM, who's falling very low in the ages. It does go down now. Secondary life coming up. SRF trying to get out of there, but they've left XM alone. I don't think you want to leave the TA alone like that. But Army's coming to try and help out. And it turns out they do win the team fight. That was really not the way to do it from Scenic. They, they lost their TA. They bought back on Victoria. I, I it guess was, they still uh, have the T2. Yeah, they got the tier 2, but they lose out in their biggest uh, biggest core that does give a big swing towards Newbie, dropping that lead that C Deck had from 3k to 1. And that was just strange. A lot of strange decisions really early pop in the Dark Rift, just leaving XM. It felt like they could have turned after the Aegis pop. Like, you know, Golem's down, Ravage is down, Control is gone. So if you backed up your TA there, that you could have possibly done stuff like the laguna was blown fairly early on there as well they had all the opportunities still this is the massive opening newbie doesn't have those ults they tried to smoke up chains faith easy target they want something bigger than that wizard would be nice and they do spot him out the shaman james starting to move forward you don't have any real way of getting in in range so they won't be able to find wizard he does tp out of there I wonder what's the game plan from C-Deck now. Like, you, I still feel like C-Deck need to be aggressive with this kind of lineup. But, uh... Yeah. Oh, YG, but he's the shop mid. C-Deck needs to play around its downtime. They know the Golem's down. They know Ravage is down. They can still take these fights. Like, there's no need to worry. They have their ults up, except for Dark Rift. But Newbie has nothing to be scared of. Like, they have nothing in their kit that should scare you. Although, Newbie does smoke up. They do have Laguna. They might want to go for an easy kill. Oh, they just got Guardian Greaves up as well on Mugi. Yules going to be there on SRF and nobody around to really help him out. He is really not that tanky of a target when you've got a Desolator available on AQ. And so suddenly New B is looking much better. So these core items and levels come up. AQ sitting at 19 on the Lena. And uh, the one thing you do know from Mugi's from newbie's playstyle, especially with Moogie on the Dazzle John, is when they do hit that level 3 timing on bad juju. 
That's uh, yeah. that's when things become impossible. Yeah, that's that's when it really starts to be super obnoxious playing up against this lineup. You really have to look at XM to try to pick off that back line. That's going to be how C deck will deal with it. Just try to burst down that dazzle before anything happens. Wizard blinks in, rolling thunder, is straight up onto Arme, but he does get the remnant elf in time. Now AQ going to be in a bit of trouble, but Shallow Grave will save for now. He's really got no way out of this situation. Surely they try to heal him up. He does go down, and now they are dropping like flies, newbie. They didn't have everything they needed. In fact, YG didn't even commit ravage throughout all that. He just held on to it. And so, three will go down for Newbie. Was it on cooldown for another couple seconds? I'm no. not sure. No, it was up. It was up. Okay. It was up that entire time. He held on to it, and just like that, they Dark Rift, they can get a push going on the bot lane. Yeah, the XM going to find oh, an God. easy pick-off onto the Pangolier. That's a great Dark Rift from SRF. It looked so good for a moment. Those flashes of brilliance from Newbie, but... Why hold the Ravage like that? I, th I think it was the BKB from XM that staved them okay. off. Like, they saw the BKB, they knew the Chaotic Offering would go through, but you'd waste the Ravage on the big target. Didn't want to commit. So, newbie, at least save that cooldown. They're going to have that for the high ground defense, but it's going to be a bit of a risky time here without follow-up. Well, it looks like RNG, or excuse me, not RNG, C-Deck aren't willing to go any further. Just happy with the amount of tier 3 damage they've done. They'll back off. There's still a tier 2 mid tower to be taken. And this will give Newbie a bit more time. I think it's very nice for Newbie to just chill out and, and wait for that, uh, that level 3 bad juju before they really start making plays. But perhaps because you still have the Ravage, maybe they'll feel the necessity to go ahead and make a smoke gank. And, well, they are grouped up. Army's going to be around the area. And Faith, going to get spotted, Army to throw out the chains, but he has help. So the rest of Cedek are going to make their way up now, just behind Arme. Remnant forward, he has an arcane rune, but only has one remnant charge left. Why is he just trying to make them go forward onto him, but they will not take that kind of bait. Yeah, a lot of uh, discipline from CDEC. They're trying to cut them off in the jungle, actually. You still have a low ground disadvantage, but they do make their way up. YG, XM, oh. he jumps on a Faith. He bursts down the Warlock straight away. The buyback is there, though. Golem is up in 20 seconds, however, but it looks like he just wants to get Fatal Bonds off. Meanwhile, Wizard controlling everyone on the Pangolier, but there's the Ravage flying out. They burst down Victoria SRF. He's tankier, but not tanky enough. They do get that kill as well. Now Arme just going to run away as fast as he possibly can. And it looks like he will get out. Messinic, they do pursue a bit too much. They do pay for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand that they want to try to play aggressive. It just felt, it felt a bit too much. They gave a lot of time to newbie to try to prep for that, and fortunately enough, there's not too much to take off the map. They lose their mid tier one, but it it is 25 minutes in. You know, it, it's uh, it's been alive for a bit too long anyway. And unfortunately for newbie, no Roche just yet. They dip out of the pit right before it respawns. They might be able to find it again. AQ. Oh, it is up right now. There. AQ says, let's get started. But the side of Cedic did scan that out. Serpent Ward's dropped onto Faith. He has Golem, so he doesn't want to die like this right now. He just fought back. They'll Shallow Grave and make sure he does get out of there. But Arme knows this. Wants to burst him down, but he gets used up. LSA gonna... No, it's gonna miss. But Golem has been dropped. Faith just scared he's going to die before he could drop it. And now Arme, he runs forward. He wants to go after Mugi. They won't have enough damage right now. They will actually lose Arme on the Ember. And losing Arme like that, that may, that may have actually given the Roshan away to the side of Newbie. Has they, it? They don't quite... They don't have enough to really jump in. They only have XM, but... He and could XM's try with strong. the BKB. I just don't know if XM's strong enough. Dalian going to be put on the Roshan. With the Deso, it's a lot of minus armor, but Newbie, they smoke up. That was underneath an Observer Ward. A very obvious smoke. Peter Malice going to catch three of them. And just 
a very awkward position for both teams right now. With Cedic, they're gonna have Ame up in five seconds, so they want Newbie to go for this. Yeah, not only that, but they've got big item on XM. Finishes up the Daedalus now. So you have a lot oh. more damage on the TA, and that's something that would have been revealed, but in the end, Newbie does give up in the Roche. That's a pretty long time going back and forth there. Now, Roshan still standing. That leaves an opportunity for Cedek to try and go for it, especially considering they know the Golem drop isn't available. It was just used 30 seconds ago. You still got the Ravage, which, you know, is, is a fairly nice ability to have, but XM won't be too afraid of that. He's got that BKB up. Yeah, there's just a newbie. lot of hesitation. I think Cedek understands that Newbie still has a lot they, they can try, and Cedex positioning hasn't been perfect. They've had Ami step a bit too far forward a couple of times, has been punished hard. Neither side is willing to leave this pit area, though. They understand the value of that Roche right now. Well, I think that's the problem, right? If, if Cedex get the Roshan and, and get an Aegis on, uh, on XM, like this game, they could lose a Rax or two because of how hard XM's hitting. He's even got the Enchanted Quiver on him. On that TA, so it's even more bonus damage. Oh. James, he doesn't get the blink he wanted, but they found the Hex anyway, YG. Still Shallow Grave will save him. He may need to commit Ravage ASAP, but no. He won't panic, he does back off, and now Wizard goes in with the Rolling Thunder, trying to control up the side of Cedic and allow YG to break that gap. He doesn't have a blink or anything like that, but Wizard has held them back long enough. Still SRF, does get caught with the Gush, he's thinking about using Dark Pact, excuse me, Dark Rift, but no, not quite yet. More hesitation. Both teams just holding on to those skills. Ame again shows himself around that Roshan pit, reminding Newbie you can't leave this area. Newbie will remind them of the same. And they've got the Golem drop now on top of Ravage, so Newbie is in prime position to try to fight here. They take the Roshan quick, both sides, but they're just stuck. Roshan really could decide the game if you're not too careful. Ah, oh, mate. Put that Heaven's Halberd up. Be very useful up against AQ on that Lena. Bounty. Alright, so it looks like they do break up for the bounties, and daytime vision, of course, just gives you a lot more forward vision here, so. Not as much guys of night, although Ami. Oh, YG thought about the ravage. Won't commit it. This has bought enough time for Moogie to get a full soul crest up, and you know that soul crest is uh, quite spammable. 4.3 seconds is the cooldown. <laughs> so Ooh. it's kind of you know, it's a bit ridiculous, right? Like it's because of bad juju. He has a 4.4 second cooldown on that uh on that solar crest. Just continuously... How long does the duration even last? I can't even remember. It's a I fair it's bit. About, uh, yeah, it's... it's I, I think it's like four seconds maybe? Around it's around that time period as well. So it's nearly 100% uptime. Just at level 2 bad juju. Which is very potent. Like, it's starting to be a constant issue for CDEC and trying to fight for this, that sustain UB has. They're not able to really mitigate that. Even with that spirit vessel... Under Ember, just just not enough to, to really burst through and UB, and I think they have to rely on XM to jump that backline. He needs to find either Fate or Mugi. You know, just stop the Warlock from dropping the Golem because that means XM is just gonna have a free time with a BKB or take out the Dazzle, so they don't have to worry about that Shallow Grave and the sustain. And then that's how CDEC kind of goes in. It's just that. Newbie has been very disciplined with their spacing here. They haven't given that opportunity to CDEC. Even with the high mobility that CDEC has with their Ember, they're not able to find the right targets just yet. Long Thunder connects from Wizard. They found Ame again with the LSA and AQ. He hits so hard. <laughs> there is a buyback available, but Newbie, no, they got to force it out. 
They don't have sentries placed down right now, so the trap is going to stick around, and C-Deck will have perfect vision of what's happening in the pit. So they're going to wait. Is this Roshan ever going to die? <laughs> or is it just forever to be tortured by these two teams? Nah, I, I think he's just going to be there. Just always mad. People are dropping by his house, poking him, then running away. Won't even keep him company. Rather unfortunate. Just kind of stuck there. But both sides do understand the importance of that pit, of course. It's just neither side is willing commit, to commit. You have a lot of good spells and wide AoEs for both sides. I'd say Newbie has the upper hand in such a tight area, which is why C deck is very, you know, conservative. But Newbie is significantly behind enough that they don't want to really take a massive risk, although they do smoke up. They jump in. Pit of Malice gonna lock them at that staircase though. SRF getting caught out. Now YG, a very nice Ravage onto three heroes with the golden drop on SRF. But here comes Ame and the buyback from SRF. They're gonna take this team fight. It's a bit risky. Ame, he's dropping. He does die. He buys back immediately as well. They will lose AQ on the Lena and the Pango Wizard does go down. And newbie, they got two buybacks out of that, but they're probably going to lose a Roshan, and they also lose Faith. And Scenic, they were waiting, happily knowing that they always have the option to turn around. And that'll be the Roshan going to the wave, Scenic. Yeah, it looked a bit messy for CDC earlier on, especially when XM got caught in the Ravage and the Golem drop. He popped the BKB after the Ravage, before the Golem, so he was controlled up for a bit, which did prevent them from taking the fight cleanly, but in the end, you're going to be happy with that exchange. Uh, new B, really forward there. They were the ones starting that fight. They tried to find more. They did get the big kill in Ame, but they don't really get the control onto XM. It just wasn't quite enough. He did drop very low. They couldn't really focus down because of the disruption of James. James was just, with his Blink Dagger, jumping the back line immediately and committing the wards. They won't have it for the push, but XM can melt towers fairly quick. So that's not a massive issue here for CDC. Well, quick pause. Nice little uh, tooltip I have here, John. Good luck, have fun, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, uh, AC coming out yep. on XM as well. So, even more for this TA. I mean, this TA is huge. Almost 24k net worth now at 34 minutes in. And I thought they were removing gold off the map. Apparently not for XM. <laughs> yeah, I know CDC has made this patch look pretty non-impactful, right? They took the early tier 2s. So they melt the map early. XM has all the farm in the world. And newbie, they do get the fortify out. They will not have Ravage, nor will they have the Golem drop. I don't think there's anything for CDC to be scared of here. The oh, Drax gone. They'll go for a second. I would. I think newbie can can't take can't afford to take a team fight either. They've just got to kind of let this go. They will. The Dark Rift immediately from SRF. Now two racks is up. c are going to be feeling very, very confident. And, you know, with a draft like Newbies, it's not exactly very easy to push back when your two racks is down. No. They're going to have to rely on, really, their Lena to consistently push it out. You can kind of do it to Pangolier. It is slightly risky if you put Wizard out there. So I think the best bet is really just having a Q shove the wave out. You could do it with... Well, you see, if they went for the Ags, it's just, you can't really expect that from a support Tide, right? Like, they're, they're kind of farm-starved. He is fairly built up for what he has, but I don't think you can really expect an Ags in this Tide in time soon for that gush. Smoke up, Cedek. They win the next team fight. The, uh, the game will probably just be over. There's not enough buybacks on the side of newbie to really uh to really allow them to fight like you need aq up you need wizard up they don't have those buybacks available the gold just isn't there for those two still newbie playing very safely on the east side of the map but scenic if they really want to could just rush the top lane right now as the creeps are starting to move in 
to that mid lane and XM seems to agree he does start going towards it. There's no backdoor protection yet. Now it comes along. But the creeps are coming. Serpents were dropped a little bit early. But I, it's probably not going to matter. Yeah. I don't think they really need a Serpents anymore. Like, XM just does the work for them. They could try using the Serpents for a safe push. Like a slow chipping away. But honestly, right now, the Shadow Shaman's key thing is that Hex and the Shackle. Just jumping the back line, get them to control off on the Warlock like we saw last time is enough to really turn these fights. Although, newbie, cooldowns are off. It's their chance to try to do something. They probably should try to just wait for the high ground, though. That's where the, these spells really come together. But they're playing outside their base. They want to try to find something while they feel like they can. Oh, well, mate. Opens forward. Has found faith. Really doesn't want to die right now, but he gets hexed up. So no golden drop available. He does have buyback. But Ame going to continue moving forward, trying to find more for his team. Nice chains coming oh. out. XM now jumps in and Mugi is dead. No buyback gold on him. And it looks like they don't also lose YG. And I believe this game may can be considered over. You still got the Lena AQ, who's forcing in the bot lane. There will be a buyback from Faith now. This will be the last fight for Newbie. They've got to make it soon, otherwise they're getting Megan. Ame gets chains out. Megan creeps are now going to be active. And they jump in, James. Doesn't get a hex off yet. Newbie not calling the GG. They're trying to really wait this out to the tides up, it seems. He's 20 seconds away. Ame finds Faith again. He can't die like this. They need the Golem, but he is definitely dying. Oh, James gets the Shackle off. He does get the Ghost Scepter off in time. Now drops the Golem. It's, is it going to be any good, though? You're still losing quite a lot, Ame. He does get out of there just in the nick of time, and Wizard ends up dying at XM. The T4s, one of them already down, the other one under Siege. Now they've got the tie up, though. So they may be able to fight, but Ame again jumping in, finding the chains onto AQ. Serp will drop oh. the Ravage. Oh, it just completely whiffed. XM have the BKB, the slider fist dodge from Ame. They just can't find it. AQ drops, no buyback on him, and there's the GG call coming out. They wanted to try one last time. But Tinek just proving to be too good in this game number one. Yeah, it's really a lot of issues I think came down to the draft. Just Newbie going back to that Moogie Dazzle is fine, but when you had a Tide and a Warlock support duo, you really have to play perfectly around those cooldowns. And unfortunately, Newbie just couldn't find the timings. See that running them over XM with really, really good timings in him and just melting that backline does force Newbie out, and they do take game one. Yeah, that'll be the first game of the... the uh... First game of the first series for Newbie being lost. We'll see if they can try to force it to a game number three. As game number two is going to be coming up in just a moment. It is MLP Dota and John X Fire. We'll see you all again very, very soon for that secondary draft.